Thanks for joining us on this edition of Business Daily. Coming to you live from Seoul, I'm Lee ji -yun. We have a lot lined up for you today, so let's get started with the day's highlights. With massive tax benefits and relatively cheap labor, Vietnam is becoming a popular place to do business for Korean companies. We take you behind the scenes of this year's World Economic Forum, which wrapped up in Davos over the weekend. But first, Korea's consumer sentiment tumbled to its lowest level in six months in January, further stoking concerns of a drastic fall in domestic spending early this year. Our Hwang Jie starts us off. Faced with plunging oil prices and the slowdown in China, Korea's consumer sentiment continued on its downward trend this month. The Bank of Korea's Consumer Sentiment Index came in at 100 in January, down two points from the previous month. The figure marks the lowest level since July last year, right after the MERS outbreak took a toll on the economy. The outbreak peaked in June, causing the index to slump to 98, but government-led sale events jump-started spending in the third quarter, helping it reach 105 in November. But with those measures losing steam early this year and the figure on a downslide, again concerns are lingering over a drastic drop in spending. Given such worries, the government has pledged to front-load its budget spending in the first three months of this year while introducing new promotional events around the Lunar New Year holiday, one of Korea's biggest national holidays that falls in early February this year. But experts say most of the focus should be on the country's household debt. With government measures, there won't be a sudden drop in consumption. But to maintain a stable improvement in spending, the government has to work on lowering household debt so it does not put excessive strain on daily expenses. The monthly index reflects the overall economic outlook of consumers, their living conditions and future spending plans. Hong Jie, Business Daily. The World Bank, meanwhile, has slashed its forecast for oil prices by roughly a third this year amid growing supply and slowing demand of oil in emerging markets. In its annual commodity markets outlook, the World Bank cut its price outlook for crude oil to an average of 37 U.S. dollars a barrel for 2016, down from a projection of 51 dollars in October. The bank said it expects a gradual recovery in prices over the course of this year, but added the rebound will be smaller than in previous years that followed sharp declines. The price forecast for 37 of the 46 commodities monitored by the World Bank were also lowered for the year. But it looks like Korea may very well benefit from this fall in oil prices. A new report from Hyundai Research Institute says lower oil prices could lead to an increase in both the country's GDP and consumption potential. It said a 10% drop in oil prices would lead to an annual GDP growth of 0.27% due to improved conditions for trade and a decline in both consumer and producer prices. But it also warned in order for the benefits to outweigh the negative effects, the country will need to draw up countermeasures against a protracted slide in exports to oil producing countries and a crunch in construction and shipbuilding orders. Spurred by calls from the government to produce more jobs, Korea's largest companies have been kicking up their hiring drive over the past five years. New data released by researcher CEO scores show that the number of corporate jobs added overall through September of last year grew by 13.3 percent. The larger the business group, the wider their employment expansion was. Korea's top five conglomerates, which includes Samsung, Hyundai Motor, and SK, saw their job count jump by 21 percent, while the top 30 groups added 17 percent over the same period. There were over 2,000 foreign direct investment projects last year in Vietnam, says the country's general statistics office, mounting to a total of 15 billion U.S. dollars. And among all of these deals, some of the heftiest ones came from Korean companies. Our Lee Ji-young tells us more. It's been about two years since ITM Semiconductor, Samsung Electronics battery pack supplier, moved its operations to Vietnam. 
This is after Korea's biggest tech firm decided to produce over half of its smartphones in the Southeast Asian country. With Samsung believing it would have to expand to Vietnam, we had to move as well to stay competitive. According to Vietnam's foreign investment agency, Korea accounted for nearly 30 percent of total foreign direct investment deals approved last year. One of the most significant FDI projects was Samsung's $2.4 billion project to establish a consumer electronics manufacturing complex in Ho Chi Minh City, set for completion in 2020. LG Electronics said it has also invested roughly $1.5 billion to establish a global production base in the port city of Haiphong by 2028. Experts say the expansion of large Korean companies to the one-party state also has the effect of bringing with it hundreds of small and mid-sized suppliers who can further benefit from the business-friendly environment the country has strived to create. The communist nation in the recent years has rolled out aggressive strategies to attract foreign companies. We get unprecedented tax benefits, complete tax exemption for the first seven years, and 50 percent exemption for the next seven years. Vietnam also offers a pool of relatively cheap and accessible labor, with last year's minimum wage standing at roughly $138 a month. It also boasts higher labor productivity levels compared to other Southeast Asian counterparts. Experts say Korean investment in Vietnam will likely continue to grow in the future, thanks to the bilateral free trade agreement that went into effect in December, as well as Vietnam's involvement in major trade pacts like the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Yi ju -young, Business Daily. You can buy all types of delicious foods and drinks from around the world right here in Korea. And considering the country has 14 free trade pacts in effect, you think they come at a good price. But a local consumer group has found otherwise. Our Eunice Kim has the story. Koreans picked up 260,000 bottles of Chilean wine last year, and the most popular of them all was the Montes Alpha Cabernet Sauvignon. Local watchdog Consumers Korea adds it came at a price. Its report showed Koreans shelled out $32.57 for a bottle of the Black Currant Aroma Cabernet, the highest of prices gathered from 10 other countries, like $20 in the U.S. and $19 in the Netherlands. The Civic Group compared farm and dairy products as well as import food prices in 35 categories over the months of June and October of last year. It also found Koreans were paying the most for a U.S. brand of seedless green grapes against 11 other markets, its cost here approaching double the price tagged in the states of $3.40. And what about Korea's best-selling alcoholic drink? Beer imports have tripled over five years, according to Food Ministry data. A 330-milliliter can of Heineken was the second most pricey, after Japan, and nearly triple the price found in birth country, the Netherlands, while a can of Miller came in at $1.84, more than double the U.S. price. Does it get any better with regional beers? Japan's Asahi was picked up at a buck 88, coming third of the 10 comparison countries, as China's Tsingtao was priced nearly triple the local price of 58 cents. In 31 of the total 35 categories, Korea ranked in the top five most costly, prompting consumers Korea to ask whether the free trade agreements are passing on the savings with the lowered entrance barrier into the domestic market. Eunice Kim, Business Daily. The 2016 World Economic Forum wrapped up in the Swiss town of Davos last weekend. During the four-day event, our reporters were busy covering everything from daily discussions on global issues to the frenzy of networking at night. To get a closer look at all this, we're now joined by our Kim Minji in the studio. Hi, Minji. Hi, Jiyoon. 
All right, so you were there in Davos yourself. How was it? Well, I would have to start off by saying there was a lot of snow, pretty cold the whole time we mm -hmm. were there, and it was it was a very beautiful town overall. Now, as for the World Economic Forum, this year's meeting was held under the theme of Mastering the Fourth Industrial Revolution. And during the four-day event, Korea and Arirang TV actively took part in the experience. And I heard there were quite a few prominent figures from Korea there as well. That's right. Leaders from Korea's business, political and academia were uh, made their presence at the World Economic Forum. Um, the guest list included Special Presidential Envoy and Korea's former finance chief Che Kyung-hwan, SK Group Chairman Che Tae-won, as well as other leaders from Korea's conglomerates. And they were all present at the Korean Night event. So one of the perks about being there was um, getting to meet these leaders while enjoying world-class food and entertainment. I mean, so how was Korean night itself? I mean, with some of the wealthiest people attending, it did draw some criticism with the it being dubbed as the party for the rich. Yes, you're right, but the get-togethers do act as an extension to their business as they get to rub shoulders with their global counterparts and they get to meet people that could be a benefit to their business. And just attending these um, events themselves, they can raise awareness of themselves and of their companies. So this year's theme was K-Culture Connect to the World. And in a video message, President Bakkane said Korea is marrying its culture with creative ideas to further lift the economy and society. The power of culture to bring healing is advancing the cause of human happiness. At a time when borders are eroding, when our world is increasingly becoming a shared community, I look forward to humanity being brought together and connecting through culture. Now, the attendees seem to agree that over the years, the event has helped boost Korea's presence on the global stage and further promote Korea's brand value. Through Korea Night, foreigners can learn about the country and mingle. I think it's a great opportunity to promote Korea. It's the eighth year now, and I believe it's been beneficial to boosting Korea's image. The interest in Korea is quite high. Uh, Davos is an environment where people are always interested in exploring markets, understanding what's happening in them. And I think because there are so many Korean executives in Davos that are there for a lot of international business people who want to be at Korea now. And that's why it's even busier than it was last year. And I heard there was one special guest at Davos who got heads turning and got a lot of attention. And we're talking about none other than Robot Hubo, who that, even got his own name called, yeah, right? That's right. Um, Hubo was developed by Keister, the Korea Advanced Institute of Science mm -hmm. and Technology. And it was also the winner of last year's DARPA Robotics Challenge. And that is a competition to find robots that can assist humans in responding to natural or man-made disasters. Now, it may still be far from looking like a human, but when it comes to completing complex tasks, this humanoid robot may become your superhero in emergency situations in the future. Ultimate goal would be that the human robot could solve all the, the, the existing problems in disaster scene, but it, it might be quite impossible in the near future. So at this moment, uh, I would like to make it possible to be used for other applications, other research groups to be used for research purposes at this moment. And staying on the topic of the fourth industrial revolution, I heard that Arirang TV actually partnered up with the Davos Forum and hosted a special session. Yes, that's right. Um, under the title of the State of Artificial Intelligence, um, a panel of four comprised of experts and business leaders um, discussed what the state of smart artificial intelligence is and offered their predictions on what the next game changers in this industry will be and debated whether the world is ready for the rapid technological advancements on the horizon. So if AI, uh, as seems to be happening, uh, can uh, amplify our intelligence, can provide tools that make us, in effect, much more intelligent than we have been, uh, then we could be talking about you know, a golden age for humanity. Now, 15 broadcasters, including BBC and CNN, hosted other sessions, and it was a first for a Korean company. Great to hear. And also, I hear that the special presidential envoy, Che Kyung Han, also, was also a panelist in one of these sessions. Yes, that's right. It was held under the name um, Regions in Transformation East Asia. And here he noted that emerging um, economies need to um, strengthen their safety nets amid increasing global uncertainties to prevent um, a repeat of the Asian financial crisis in 1997 and 98. He also held a separate press conference where he said that the creative economy, which the current administration 
innovation has been pushing for is in line with the fourth industrial revolution. Now, this is driven by information communications technology. The creative economy is aimed at merging different sectors and turning creative ideas into new business opportunities to create new jobs and industries. And while it's on track, Che emphasized that Korea needs to pursue new industry policies. Having the right infrastructure is important. In order for our creative economy drive to work, we have to strip back regulations. As it stands, it's difficult to be innovative. Therefore, we have to cut back on red tape. Secondly, Korea needs to have an ecosystem which can tend to such developments. Now, as for how ready Korea is to adapt to the fourth industrial revolution, Swiss bank UBS ranks Seoul 25th out of 139 countries. Switzerland topped the list, followed by Singapore, the Netherlands, Finland and the United States. Now, the ability to adapt to the fourth industrial revolution was measured in five categories, labor market flexibility, educational system, infrastructure, technological ability and legal protection. All right, so with all that under our belt, it seems like Korea is heading to the right direction. That's right. Thank you so much for coming in today, Minchu. No Mitchell. problem. And that will do it for today. Thanks so much for watching. And we'll be back tomorrow at the same time, same place for your business daily. Until then, goodbye.